managing your company's finances remotely is now more important than ever. With Scotia Online for Business, you can safely and quickly conduct your transactions and save on costs. Accept payments, transfer funds, including third-party and wire transfers, view balances and download statements, pay bills and credit cards, make supplier payments, manage payroll, and purchase foreign exchange. Let us handle the way your business does business. Speak with a Scotia representative today. Call 888-429-5087 or email bnsj.businessbanking at scotiabank.com. Go, Kesia. Welcome to our final in the series for Scotia Online for Business webinar. I am your moderator for this evening, and my name is Kesia Johnson Vaughan, Senior Manager for Professional Partnerships for Caribbean North and Central. So today we have with us customers from four countries, Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, Cayman, and Jamaica. We want to thank you for taking the time to join us, and we hope that you'll find this, this session very informative and interactive. So what are we going to be talking about today? Today I have a team with, with me consisting of five persons. And then the, the main persons are Rashid John, he's our payment solutions expert. Tedra Johnson, Commercial Service Sales Officer, Corporate and Commercial. We have Michelle Shaw, Commercial Services Representative, and Rithman McKenney, who's our product, product Specialist Cash Management. So today we have two presenters. Our first presenter will be Rashid Johns, and he will walk us through the registration process, which will look on welcome email, digital versus the physical token, and how to add the system administrators. And Michelle will walk us through um, batch payments, which focuses mainly on vendor payments as well as payroll. So let's over to you now to my first presenter, which is Rashid. And again, thank you for joining us. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Rashid here again. And for today, I will be taking you guys through the welcome emails along with the registration process. Now. In addition to that, I will also explain the difference between a digital and physical token. Now, first up is will be the welcome emails. Now, once a user has been created on the system, our team at Scotia Bank will send you three emails. One, the first one will be an email from no reply at scotiabank.com, which will contain what's called your reference number. And if you notice below, there's a screenshot of how the email will look. The second email would be a secure email instructions guide that will contain a PDF document with step-by-step -step instructions on how to register and access our secure email system. Now that system is used whenever we're sending important or sensitive information to our clients. And the third email would be an email from EMS at scotiabank.com notifying you that an officer and representative here at Scotiabank is trying to send you a secure, sensitive email. And to access it, please click on the link. Secondly, digital versus physical tokens. Now, by default, once a user is created on the system, they will be created as a digital token user. And we do have a minimum requirements for either your phone or a tablet. Now for Apple, it's 9.3 and above, and for Android, Android it's 6.0 and above. Now, in the event that your phone is not compatible with the token, what you will do is just request for a physical token and we will, be, we will prepare the tokens and can send to the branch of your choosing. Now, the physical token, it's a small dongle. Let me just show you, like this. And what you will do is press the button here and a six digit number will appear on the screen and you will enter that whenever you're registering or signing in. Now, from our end, once we create a user on the system, they will be created as a company system administrator. Now, the company system administrator is what's called a super user because what they will be able to do is to create an additional users on the system, along with resetting other users, um, updating email address, and also modifying other user accounts. Now, unlike a regular user who will be prompted to, well, a, authorization code will generate on their profile, a company system administrator is required to have what's called a secret word. Now, this secret word is very important 
important for you to remember, and it is separate from your password. This secret word is what's used to verify you as a user on the system. So say you call into our support team and you require assistance as a company system administrator. They will ask you to verify your secret word. Additionally, if you forget your password or your credentials have been reset, when you're recovering your credentials, it's going to ask you for your reference number that would have been sent to you along with this secret word. Very important for you to remember, okay? And I'm going, I'm going to be taking you guys through the full registration process so that you can see what I'm talking about. Now, what I'm going to do next is take it to the sign-on page, show you what the email looks like with the actual reference number in it, and I'm going to do a live registration on the system, okay? Now, firstly, I'm going to show you our secure email. Sorry, not secure email. I'm going to show you our registration email. Once you get this email from no reply at scotiabank.com, what you will do next is to copy this reference number. Now, I'm going to show you something which is also important when copying. When you're copying, you start from the first character and go to the end. However, what we find out what's happening is that sometimes you do this and an extra space is created. So when you copy that information and you paste it in our sign-on page, it's going to give you an error message. So very important, when you're copying the reference number, ensure that there's no space by the last character. So let me get this here. And remember, it's just to right-click, copy. And now we're going to go to the sign-on page. Now, for the sign-on page, you will go to your respective country sign-on page. And to the upper right, you will select the drop-down arrow and then business banking. Now, what I'm doing here now is the page for Jamaica. So I would have typed in jamaica.scotiabank.com and it would have taken me here. So again, to the far right, you will select the drop-down arrow. You're gonna, you're gonna be given two options, personal banking and business banking. You're gonna select business banking Good. Now, as a new user, right, the option that you will select will be register now. But before I select that, let me just explain this page. So firstly, you would have your username and password section here. And if it is that it's your personal computer or laptop, sorry, you can select remember username. To the far right, if there's any important system updates that we would like you to be aware of, you will see it here. Okay, under important notices. And in the middle now, these are the different links for our page. Now, we also have a demo page. So just in case um, you want to go over either this over this presentation or if you want to just go through the system by a demo video, you can always select take our demo. But for this instance though, we're gonna just select register now. And if you notice, it's going to prompt me for a reference number and the an authorization code slash secret word. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste in my secret word. And I'm going to type in my, my sorry, my reference number and I'm going to type in my secret word now. Now, this secret word is something that I would have created beforehand, right? All right, great. Now, once you've entered the reference number and the secret word correctly, you'll be brought to the user registration details page. Basically, you're going to be registering as a user on the system now. So the first thing that you would need to do is to create a username. So let me just create one here. Create one. So the username, John Doe 105. Now, important to note, if you notice, I had typed in John Doe 101 and it gave me a message that the username already exists. Now, once a username already exists, it cannot be duplicated regardless of whichever company is on the system. 
you can't have a duplicate username on the system. You would have to create your own unique username. Then the second step would be to create a password. Now to the right here, you will notice the criteria for the password. Eight or more characters long, at least one uppercase letter, at least one lowercase letter, at least one number, does not contain your username, and no special characters, letters and numbers only. So let me just create it here. Good. And then it's gonna prompt me for my secret word now. No, this can be anything, right? It can just be a word, it can be a string of numbers, anything. Now, it has to be between eight to 32 characters in length. No special characters, no spaces. It has to be one single word. Good. Now, Below, it's going to give you a barcode to scan because, again, by default, once you're created as a user on the system, it will prompt you, it will create you as a digital token user. Now, to add a token to your device, what you will need to do is to download the digital token app. Now, once you go on the Play Store, you would search for digital token. It's going to be a black and white Scotiabank logo. And once you install it, you're going to select login, and I'm going to show you how what it looks like. Okay, and if you notice, it says login, and it's going to prompt you for the password or the key entry that you normally use to access your phone. So if it's a fingerprint, a Arabic scanner, a pattern, just enter the same thing that you would use, and then you'll be brought into the app. And there's also an add sign here. If you notice, it's a plus. Once you click on that, your camera will appear. And all you would have to do is to scan the barcode. And you get that message, token added successfully. Now, once your token has been added successfully, then we can move on to the next page. So we will select continue. And then you'll be brought to the questions and answer page. So you will select three different questions and answers. So, the child, what was your response? Let me just. Okay. So I'm just choosing generic questions and answers. Okay, and lastly, there we go. Three different security questions, three different answers. All right. Good. Now, this is the last page for the registration. Once you've reviewed your username, your secret word, and the security questions, you will then proceed to enter the token validators in the app. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open back my device, log in, and I'm gonna enter the token validators on the screen, okay? Right, here we go. And you're going to select register. Great. So now that we have successfully registered, I'm going to show you how to sign in. So once you click on the Scotia Online for Business link, it's going to take you directly to the Scotia Online page. 
Now I'm going to enter my username, which is John Doe. My password. Sign in. Hold on, let's see what's happening there. So it's John Doe. 105. Good. So once you've successfully entered your username and password, it's then going to prompt you for your token value. Okay. Again, you open the app. Enter the token value that's on the screen. And the token value only lasts for 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, it changes. All right. So here we go. All right, security questions. Great, and I'm in. Now, once you're into the system, by default, it's going to take you to the dashboard, which is the main page, right? And basically, that is how you would register on the system. Now, what I will be doing, I will be passing you on to my colleague, Michelle Shaw, who will be taking you through batch payments, which includes direct deposits, which is mainly used for payroll, disbursements, which is used for vendor payments, okay? But before I do that, I'm going to hand over back to Casey. Thank you, Rashid, for that excellent demonstration. So as um, while Michelle comes to, to share with us, I just want to remind you of some key things that Rashid would have just shared. It's very important that as customers log in for the first, very first time to the Scotia Online for Business platform, that you look out for three critical emails from us. The first email that you'll get from us, it's one from a no reply at Scotia Bank, and that one will consist your reference number. The other one that you receive is the one that's from EMS, which is a secure email that contains your secret word. And then there's another one from Scotia Bank, which will indicate to you um, the guide, in, the instructional guides as to how to log in. So it's important also to know that when you have your, when you see the email with reference number and you'd like to copy that and paste it in the, um, to log on, please ensure that there are no spaces in between when you copy. So you need to make sure that you copy from the start of the, the reference number to the exact last um, digit or, or numeric or um, alphabet that is there to ensure that you're able to get in and you will not receive an error message because if you copy an extra space, you'll <laughs> receive an error message. So it's very, very important to remember those things upon logging on for the first, very first time for the Scotia Online platform. And your secret word is very important. You need to remember that secret word. So whatever you need to do to remind you um, and keep that number, that, that word very close to you, please ensure that you do something to remember, all right? So thank you again, Rashid. And now we're going to move on to Michelle. As Rashid indicated earlier, she's going to be walking us through vendor payments, and she'll also show us how to do payroll. Michelle, thank you. Over to you. Thank you, Kasia. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. All right, I'll just proceed to do the direct disbursements. And firstly, we're going to look at the payments. Um, it is very important to know and have everything correct. So first, we're going to have to do the recipients. So it's a rule of thumb to do the recipients at the recipients first. So when you're creating the payment, it's much smoother going through. So I'm going to click on the tab there. As you're seeing, it's on the same length, um, main tab there beside dashboard. I'm going to click on the payments tab. Below, you're going to see the sub tabs, which you're going to see a few options, payment summary, create payment, recipient. So we're going to go to the recipients first. From there, to the right of the screen, you're going to see two tabs in the in the corner. I say I call them to be gold tabs. So we're going to click on create recipient. We're going to first do an individual um, recipient. And this would be used to do um, to add your um, your employees first. So we're going to select. We've selected the recipient type. Then we're going to go set recipient type. From there, you're going to be asked to enter the information for that recipient. 
as you can see along the right, left side rather, their first name, the, the last name, recipient ID, account type, and num account number and, and currency are mandatory. All of the options are, you know, if you wish to do so for, I guess, if you want to make it more thorough. But for this purpose, we're going to go through the mandatory steps, the, what's, what mandatory fields, what are required. So I'm going to go, go ahead and add, add, my, um, add my recipient. I'm putting in the first and last name, recipient ID. We also recommend putting in the employee's TRN. Makes it much easier for them to be identified since, since it's unique to them as well. So for example, put in, let's make it up to nine numbers. All right. So if obviously set to the country, which is Jamaica and so forth. So we're going to go straight down to the account type, which is very important. So for this purpose, we're going to select savings account number. A Scotia Bank's account number is from it's up to nine. So I'm going to choose, say, for example, the you know, about six numbers again. And from there, we select the input to that account number, then currency of the account, which is Jamaican, of course, for this purpose. Jamaican dollar. Below, you're going to see the banks available. Please note that this is all the banks in the country, all the local banks. So we're going to keep it to BNS for this purpose. So we're going to say, for example, this employee has an account at Scotia Bank Montego Bay. As you're seeing below, information comes up, which includes the bank, the SWIFT code for Scotia Bank overall and the ABA number, which is unique again to Montego Bay branch, and of course the branch address and so forth. So, right, so Michelle, what... just to clarify, to help you all right there, you're seeing what we will see in that box would be the all the commercial banks that's available in the respective countries along um, with their branches, all right? Right. Okay. Right. Well, yes, right. So okay. all the local banks you will see, because the only banks are, are, are embedded in the platform right, for right now. So no, no bill societies and so forth, just local Thank commercial you. banks. Okay. All right. So once we're there, so we click on to read everything that is that was entered, first and last name, recipient ID, account type, account number, and currency, and the branch is correct, then we can proceed to click on submit. Here you'll be asked to input your um your password and your 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 token value. Oh, it says my recipient already existed. Let me try another TRN, made up TRN. Right, let me try that again. Right, so again, it's giving me the option to review um, the information I just created. And again, everything looks good. Then we can, again, it's gonna ask you to input your password and token value, and you press confirm. All right, so we're going to move from here. So with the same steps for if you're going to add a business recipient, so it would be, you know, a vendor or a supplier. So again, the same process, um, create recipient under recipients, on the payments, then recipients, then create payments. And this time we're going to select business. This is, again, it's for a business customer. So in this purpose, you're going to see the screen changes a little bit. So you're going to see the company name again here. And so what's required here now is the company name, the recipient ID, again, the account type, account number, and currency, and again, a list of the banks below. So again, we're going to do the demo again for the name of the company. Uh, the recipient ID is just to help you to identify the, the recipient, the business recipient in your list of recipients. It's really, really for ease of reference. All right, so again, we can say um, we would pay, um, what can I use? I said that he gives and he sells me lumber. So I'm gonna use that as my recipient ID. Again, if you want to, you can input the address of the your vendor or supplier and um, email address and so forth to get a complete profile. We're going to stick to the mandatory fields here. So again, we're going to select the account type. So we're going to select checking this time. And again, put in an account number. And again, the currency. We're going to scroll on from the options there. 
Again, you'll see there are banks available on the platform. This time we're gonna to stick to Scotia Center. So our customer is a Scotia Center customer. And as you can see again, the bank information populates once you've selected the branch and you're gonna you're seeing the branch name, the, the SWIFT code, the ABA number, which identifies that branch and the address of the branch. Again, just again to review, just to make sure all the relevant fields are, are populated. Then we move to the submit button. We're again given an opportunity to review. Again, just to make sure everything is correct. It's very important because it may lead to, if you know, some, God forbid something that happened, you have to do, do um, it to an incorrect uh, account and so forth. So we're trying our best to avoid that. At the bottom here is again, you're being, you're being asked to input your password and your token value, as was demonstrated earlier. All right, so we have added our recipients now. We're going to go straight to the templates. So the templates now, similar to the recipients in that it basically allows you to do multiple or batch, batch payments. So you can use it for your employees. Again, for payroll, we highly recommend it because it makes it much easier on a monthly basis or a bi-monthly basis to you know, move, move, uh, move their funds to their accounts in a timely manner. So with the templates now, as we're seeing here, it's still on the same sub tab below the main tabs. So we click on it right beside recipients. So you click on the templates tab. And again, to the right, you'll see a gold tab. Again, I call it gold tab. Um, create template. And we're gonna, we're being asked to, to, um, to state what type of template we're, we're creating. So we're gonna do a business disbursement for this purpose. Again, paying to our vendors and suppliers. So we select that from the drop down box and select payment type. Here we're asked to give it a name. So again, the template is something that you're going to be required to use if you're um, going to, it's best to create if you're gonna be creating it to doing this payment monthly to the supplier or vendor. It's much easier to draw for basically. So we're gonna give it a name. And we can say lumber supplies. And we're going to set the account to debit. And the maximum minimum amount isn't really necessary here. So we're going to just leave it there. Um, we are going to basically pull from our list of recipients which was added. So we're going to see that below, you're going to see two options there add recipient, create recipient. So we just created recipients a while ago. For example, so we're going to say add recipients. They will populate all the recipients that we have created beforehand. So again, we can select which ones you want to, to, to pay. So for this purpose, if we're going to, if we're going to pay multiples, we're going to, we're going to select maybe about, about, about five or so. Just to make it easy to show how it's, it's possible if these are persons who you would pay on a monthly basis and we would click on add recipients. All right, so these persons will be a part of this particular template named Lumber Supplies. And you can always deselect and select, you know, when you get to the, the template, who you want to pay this month. Say one of them never um, supplied you anything or didn't need anything from that particular supplier this month. You can deselect and just, just select the ones who are relevant at that particular point in time. So for here now, we're just gonna select all of them just to create a template. Um, if there are set amounts, you can also put the amounts in the default amount here if necessary. Uh, but for this purpose, we're gonna keep it at um, zero for now. But um, just reviewing everything again, this is the, the template name, the account we're debiting, the suppliers that were selected, and we're gonna click on submit. <laughs> A uh, point to note to the right, you have an option there is an addendum or memo. If you want to make any special notes uh, specific to that, if you're making a part payment or you want to make something, you know, for reference to, for your report, you can make notes, you know, for future references. So there, from there, you can click on the submit once everything is correct. Michelle? Yes. Um, just to assist our customers. Um, mm -hmm. 
just remind me of that process again and just take it a little bit slower for them to <laughs> fully understand. Um, okay. Just to make sure that part, they, they completely get how to add that. So just can you just quickly remind us again of that step and do it a little bit slower? Thank you. Oh, okay, no problem. All right, so again, we start from the main tabs, which is um, we're going to select payments. So let me start from payments. So we're at payments. So we're going to go select below to the sub tabs right below. As we're seeing there, it gives you the option to create templates. So that's what we're going to do today. So I've selected templates. To the right, we're going to see a tab, a gold button in the corner. So, so, so Michelle, just to mm -hmm. help us, a template is used to do right. specific right. Go ahead. Right. It is used to basically assist in making batch payments. If you, for, um, especially for payroll purposes, if you have five, 10, 15 employees that you pay um, monthly or bi weekly, it will basically uh, make that uh, process much quicker and therefore make saves time instead of it putting everyone, you know, one by one. So that's the main okay. idea behind the batch payments. And the main idea on. is that, Michelle, just to reiterate, you're saying if we have, um, we make, for example, every month we would pay to one particular um, company and mm -hmm. we pay to four persons in that company. We right. need to make sure that we add that one time. Once we add that one time, because we're going to be paying them on a um, recurring Monthly basis. basis. Mm -hmm. Once, right, it would be easier for us to do that one time entry. Right. So it's important that when we're going to do payments to multiple um so multiple persons uh, in one organization, we use the batch payments. Right. One organ or multiple organizations. Okay. So it's multiple organizations. So for example, like I was doing a, a demo with the lumber, so you have somebody who supplies lumber and you know any other material. If you have four specific suppliers, you and you sub they, if they pay you pay them monthly, then you therefore um make it easier for yourself by adding them as on a template because they are they are recurring payments. So much easier for you. And the same principle applies if you're paying for um paying your um salaries to your, your employees. Again, if you have I get five or ten or hundred employees, it's much easier for you to create a template that it saves time and it's more uh, it saves time and more just cost effective, cost effective as well. So that's what that's the idea behind them. It's, it's, it's basically to cut down on the time that it would take to do, to itemize every, you know, payment singularly. All right. So we're going to move on to creating a payment again. So again, we're going to create template. And we're going to select again, business disbursement. So the, the business disbursement is for, again, paying your vendors and your suppliers. Once we have selected that in the drop down box, we click on the option beside it to select the payment type. So we've just done that. Okay, so once we have selected the payment type, it does give you an option to change that above in case you have made an error or so for you. You can go back and reselect that if necessary. Again, we're given an uh, option to create a template name. Again, this is unique to this particular supplier. So again, it's ease of, for ease of reference. Um, select the account we're going to debit to pay the supplier below. Again, so since we have earlier select, create, or created our recipients, we're going to scroll down to the recipients option there, who we're going to pay. And since they're already in our recipients um, selection, we're going to click on add recipients here. So we normally practice adding recipient first, so it can be much smoother when you're creating the payment instead of having to pay it when you're going to create the payment. So this list, you know, it takes less time. All right, so we're in the process of creating our a template. Um, this is our list of recipients that we have, for example. So we're gonna select about five recipients. Our five of our, our, our monthly um, monthly suppliers. Once you've selected it by 
clicking on the um selecting the boxes beside it, we can go scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on add recipient. Okay, we just want to make sure everything is correct. Template name, the account we're debiting, and the correct recipients. I was saying you can also put in if the amount is set, if you pay them a set amount monthly if you wish. And that can also be um, edited when you're going to create the payments. So things set in stone here. And also the addendum and memo, you can also make notes if you want. If it's a breakdown, you're going, you're setting a part payment, you can say part, part two or four payments, something to help you to remember if necessary. You have the option of removing as well below, you know, removing the recipients if you don't want to pay them this month. Also selecting, if you know, if you're selecting all five recipients that we have here. And then we review again and make sure. So we just click on submit. Right, so again, allowing us to review, we are being asked to enter our password and our token value. And that will complete um, the pressing confirm and that will be completing creating the template. As a similar step now, we're gonna move on to one-time payment. So one-time payment, as the name suggests, is just a one-off payment. Someone did something for your one time, you know, again, just a one-off payment to them. It's the same process where we're going to go back to the payments tab. So we're gonna click on payments again from the main tabs. We're gonna go to um, create payment. And you're given three options there to pay um, from the template, one-time payment or upload. We're gonna do a one-time payment right now. So again, we're going to select um, uh, business disbursement again. Since you're paying a supplier for the one for one off payment that you know we couldn't find somebody for the you know, our usual supplier couldn't supply us for something, we're just using the supplier as a you know as a go-to for the for the for the you know for the meanwhile, for example. So we click on one time payment, this is disbursement and create payment. Now we're asked to give this a payment name as well. As you're seeing there, um we're required to give it a payment name, so we can say one time supplier effective date. So we can also, it gives us the option to um, post a uh, post date of payments. If we don't want to pay today, we can um, basically have it in the system um, to pay it tomorrow or you know another day. So we have the option to change the dates. So you not, not, don't have enough funds in your account right now, we can say, hey, give back a couple of days time, I have enough funds to cover this payment and so forth. So you have that option. Again, we're gonna select um, the account we're debiting. And we're gonna select from our recipients that we've created um, before. So we're gonna select, say, one of the recipients, a one-time payment is select Select the box, uh, tick the box, and then we're going to click on add recipients while you scroll down to the bottom of the page. We're going to review that is the right person that we've selected. Everything is correct. The account number, the date, and the payment name. And we're going to input our amount that we're paying to them. We're going to submit. So once you've submitted, now you're again going to be asked to click on, so sorry, input your password and your token value, and then that payment will have been sent through, whether it's to be approved or sent straight through for processing, which takes about 10, 15 minutes if it's within Scotiabank, may take 24 to 40 hours for another bank as well. All right, so that would cover um, individual and business payments, and payments using templates and one-time payments. So that's it from me. Back over to you, Kasia. Michelle, um, thank you very much for that detailed presentation. Um, I believe that we probably would have gone through bill payments, Michelle. So what I would want to do is um, if you, Rashid, can take us, just to remind us um, for bill payments, just to remind us quickly, since we're in that tab, 
um, how we would make a bill payment again, just for customers who probably would not have remember. Just going to ask you quickly to do that, and then we we'll go to the question and answer at the um, next. So, Rashid, would you Hi, kind yes, of sure. that? Sure, no problem. I'll be glad to assist. Okay. Now, for the bill payments option, guys, this is the option that is used to pay like your utility companies, schools, and other companies who had who have registered for the service. Now, for that, once you have the service enabled, you will go to payments. Select bill payment. And before I go to the manage fees option, if you notice, there's a reminder here at the top about the cutoff times. And for flow especially, they have the criteria for their account number, okay? So please always pay attention to these notices at the top. Now, and again, the, and this would be and this would be regarding the respective countries. That's correct. Each country okay. would have their own prompts. Okay. Good. Now, to create a bill payment account on the system, what you will do is select Manage Pays. And then what you will be seeing on the screen is a listing of all our bill payment merchants, right? So you don't have to go on and say, okay, I'm going to add Flow. No, Flow is already in the listing. Um, you also have a listing of schools, a lot of strata companies, especially companies who, well, strata corporations who have their maintenance fees, they are also in this listing. So let me just choose one here. Um, let me choose a Caribbean estate. Good. Now, once you've selected a company, what will appear below is the account number criteria. Now, once I selected Caribbean Estates, below it's saying your payee account number must be four characters in length. Okay, so always pay keen attention to that. And let me see. So four characters. Submit. And again, it's going to prompt, always prompt you for your password and token value to confirm. So let me just go ahead and enter that here. And again, I'm going to log back into the app to retrieve a new token value. Very, very secure system. All right, so I'm entering the token value now. Great, PAE successfully created. And once the PAE has been created, they will be populated in the list below. Now, once you've created the PAE, the next step is actually to pay them. Now, I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and walk you through that step. Normally, you could always select pay bill, but again, I'm just gonna take you back from beginning so that it's easier to remember. Now, once you're on the dashboard, you're gonna select payments, bill payment and below now you're going to see the option to create bill payment all you all that is required is for you to select the account that you're going to pay from the account that you're going to pay to the amount the effective date and say it's a one say it's a recurring fee, right? Say every month you normally pay this amount, right? What you can do instead of going in each time to create the payment, you can always set a frequency. Now, again, it can be one time if you so wish. No, you can either set it for weekly, every 14 days, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually. It's up to you. And it makes it much easier. You don't have to keep saying, okay, do I have to pay this bill? and stuff, okay? So you can always set a frequency for the bill payment. All right, no, but for this instance, I'm gonna leave it at one time. Once you've entered the information, all that is required, you will select submit, enter your password and token value. And if it's gonna require approval, you can just select confirm and it will be on the system pending approval. 
But once you're here and you're seeing the password and token value and you've entered the information, the payment will be sent for processing. And basically that's it for bill payments. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Rashid. And thank no you, problem, Michelle, no for assisting us today, um, walking us through the key areas. Um, so Rashid, I'm just looking back at the, at the screen and I'm seeing um, one other tab that would have said validation reports. Do we you normally use that tab? Okay, great question, um, KCL. Now, the validation reports tab coincides with the batch payments that are on the system. So once you do a direct deposit or a disbursement on the system, what is generated is what's called a validation report. Now, once you select validation reports, all the payments that you have done on the system will appear here. Now, I'm going to show you the difference with a validation report versus a payment summary. Now, once you select the actual payment, right, what will come up is a description. So basically, it will say, okay, if you have 10 recipients in the payment, how many out of these 10 payments were rejected, accepted, how much of them were other banks versus kosher banks, it will give you a full breakdown of everything in the payment. And in the upper right, you can also download that this information. Okay, say you have done a, your payroll at the end of the month and you want to export that information into your own payroll so software system. What you can do, you can either download it in text, Excel, or PDF, or you can download it in standard export format, which would be like a CSV file that you can save and then upload into your payroll software. Now, additionally, once you've completed a payment, I'm going to take it to the payments tab again. You can also view the payment in the far to the far right by selecting view payments history. And you're going to see the listing of all the payments here, but it won't give you that full breakdown like the validation report. It will just give you a summary of everything. So once you click on the payment, you're just going to see the recipient's name, account number, and whether or not it has been accepted. Once a payment has been rejected, now let me break it down. If you have a Scotia Bank recipient in that listing, right? Our system will be able to verify the information within five to 10 minutes because the accounts are maintained here at Scotia Bank. Now, if an account number is invalid, you're going to see status rejected. And to the right, you're going to see account number invalid or frozen account or closed account. Whatever reason it is, you're going to see the description there. If it is another bank recipient, right, what's going to happen is that we would send over the payment to the other bank. When the other bank gets that payment and they review the information, if everything is okay, they will credit the account. Now, if something is wrong with the account, they're going to return the funds. And for the status, you're going to see returned and you're going to also see the description as to why the funds have been returned. Okay, and you will come here for the payment summary. Additionally, when you go to validation report, you'll also see this in the validation report summary that you can also download and or print or upload to your payroll software. Okay. I hope that answers the question, Kesia. Yes, thank you very much, Rashi. That indeed provided some very good clarity, which I believe all customers will be very appreciative of. So we're going to move into the questions now being asked by um, our customers who are with us online. And the first question um, that I am going to throw out to the team is the customer asked, um, could you, well, they're asking as it relates to when Michelle was doing the demonstration, she had showed us all um, the recipient's ID. The person is asking, is that a national ID? Okay, well, I can take that one. Now, the recipient ID, it's a unique field, right? Now, what Michelle had said is that it can it's easier to differentiate the, um, the records by using their employee ID or their TRN. Now, it's not a given that they have to use their IDs. It's just an example or a, a, an easier method of creating a recipient ID. It can be anything. It can even be their nickname on the system. But so as to avoid duplication, 
it's best to use the TRN or an employee ID number so that each record is unique. Okay, thank you. So another question is, um, can I import recipients for templates from the third party transfer tab or do I have to type all the information? Let me repeat the question. Can I import the recipients for templates from the third party transfer tab or do I have to type all the information? All right, great question. Actually, no, you won't be able to export that information from third party recipients over to the main recipients listing. However, what you can do is copy the information that is on the third party recipient screen, mm -hmm. put it in a CSV, put it in an Excel sheet, and we can help you to create a, what's called a CSV upload file, right? Now, again, so with you said a CSV, what does CSV yes, stand for? Comma, it's what, comma server delimited. Okay, go ahead. Now, with the CSV file, you'll be able to upload a batch of recipients to the system. In addition, the CSV file would also allow you to even do a payroll or a vendor payments from it, right? Now, for more information on this, you can always send an email to the respective email that will, you will see at the end of the presentation, and we will get in contact with you and be able to walk you through the process. Okay, but thank for you. For third-party thank recipients, okay, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead, Rashid. No, I was saying for third-party recipients, we can just copy the information from one screen, put it in the Excel sheet. We might have to add a few additional fields, save it as a CSV, then upload to the system. The whole process normally takes around five to 10 minutes. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Maybe, Rithmond, you can take this. Do you know how do I print a receipt for an online transaction? Printing a receipt from the bot section or just from a one-time payment? Because so if I it is from a we could, I think you can probably do both to explain to the customers just in case they want to do batch payments or the one-time payments. So um, from a batch payment, the only way that the customer would get some type of confirmation would be, would be to go into the payment history and probably do a screen print. But just generating a, re a receipt per se, you wouldn't be able to do that from, from the website. You would only be able to probably do a screen, do a snap or a screenshot, just to show that if you can, I think Rash Rashid, if you can pull it up and you go into the payments tab, you would see where it shows um, sent under the status, and that would mm -hmm. confirm that the payment has already left the, the customer's account. Okay, okay. Excellent. Thank you, Rithmond. Um, the other question that we have here is if you have a reason to change how to get the digital token on a new phone, do you have to register once again? So in other words, if I had a digital token on this phone, I changed to a new device, do I need to register all over again? Or what is the process for me to be able to um, select that new that? the token be synced back to my account. Would like to take so, that so you would not have to register again. However, there is a requirement there. Uh, if the customer is a, um, what they call a CSA, a company system administrator, mm -hmm. what they can do is reach out to customer support mm -hmm. and customer support would then send them a new reference number. Right. They would have to go into the recover credentials, and once they enter the reference number and the secret word, mm -hmm. the system would automatically prompt them to that section where they can go and scan a barcode again to get, to add the token. So if the customer is switching phones, they would need to download the app to their new phone, right. and then once they enter that information in, they can add the token to the new phone, and that would sync the new phone to their existing um, user profile. So what you're saying, just to make sure I'm very clear, you're saying the customer will need to, one, reach out to the customer service unit, or in other words, you may reach out to your business banker just to indicate that you'd want to get this change, and they will send that communication to the um, our internal support team who would now reach out to the customer to give or to send an email to the customer with the reference number. The customer will need to download the app on their phone, 
And basically, by downloading the app, once they receive that email with the reference number, then they'll be able to enter again. That's correct, Ritma? Yes, but the customer can reach directly out to the customer support. They, they don't right. necessarily have to go to, the, to their business banking manager mm -hmm. um, to, for it to be a bit smoother. Because keep in mind, the customer support is open at extended hours, and, and we have a, a full team that's there to provide guidance to them. Right. As well as as well as they can reach out to another CSA who right. can also reset and recover them. All right. So the reason why I said they could reach out to the business banker, because, for example, we have phone lines that customers could call in in case they're not able to get through when they call. There is going to there are going to be email addresses, which we will show at the end that you can send the email to and we'll have someone who will contact you. All the customers need to do is to indicate the challenge, what 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 they need their assistance with. Um, stating the name of their company, um, a contact number, and to say that they would like to um, resync their token or reset their token. Okay. Correct. Correct. All right. Excellent. All right. Another question here is: How can I register my company to be in the list for payments? Okay. So just like any other any other services that we offer for online banking, you can reach out to either the GTB team. We'll then complete some forms and guide you, to, guide you through the process of how to enroll for the payment to be a built payment merchant. Okay, so, so, so in other words, their business banker or their GTB officer, some customers may not have been on this before to know what GTB stands for. So, Tidra, just to remind them, what does GTB mean? Global Transaction Banking. Okay, great. So a global transaction banking team, they actually right. are responsible for merchant services in addition for online banking. So if you you probably would, some customers would know their officer, otherwise they may be familiar with their business banking officer. And in that case, they'll reach out to them to say they want to add additional services, right? Yes, what I actually right. want to point out to customers, which we probably would not have mentioned in previous webinar webinars is that over the last few months, we would have revised our current package offering for the customers across Caribbean, North and Central. So that means all the countries that are here today, which is TCI, Cayman, Bahamas and Jamaica. What we would have done is reviewed the current packages that we offer to you to make sure that it is far much more um, affordable or competitive for you to access online banking. In so doing, what we did was that we have removed from um, from the package a you have to do pay for monthly fee there's no longer a monthly fee and there is no longer a registration fee all we have now done is that you will know it's a pay per use and a pay per use means that for example there are about four different types of transaction that you'll pay for and uh, we would have walked through some of them today which is disbursements slash batch and batch um batch payments so you would pay for doing that one time transaction and also for we went through previously RGTS and wire payments, you'd pay for those. All the pretty much other serve and third party you would pay, but the third party would only be to another bank. If you're transferring within Scotia bank accounts, you do not pay. So most of our services now that you probably would have paid for in the past, it's actually free. So you can speak to your business banker who can provide more clarity, but we made those changes in the last couple of months. And so for all the countries that are here today, that's what the new package will consist of. All right. So I'm um, quickly going to ask the team again, just to another question. So Rithmond and um, Tidra, or Rithmond or Tidra, we would have indicated previously that there are cutoff times for RGTS um, and, HH and ACH payments. Can you tell me what are the cutoff time is for Bahamas? So the Bahamas sends out an, what we call an upload file um, to other banks um, throughout the day. There are three, 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 I guess, uploads. One is at nine o'clock, the other at 12, and the other one at three. So the idea is that the earlier the, the, earlier the customer sends their payment out, the quicker the recipient would get it. Generally speaking, between banks, there is an agreement so if the customer sends their payment before the last cutoff, which is three o'clock, the recipient should get it same day. If it's sent after three o'clock, it would be remitted to the beneficiary bank next business day. 
Okay, thank you. And for um, Jamaica, what is the cutoff time, Rashid? Sure. So the cutoff time for Jamaica, it's 1.30 p.m. Any okay. payments done after 1.30 p.m. will be paid the following business day between 8 a.m. to 12 noon. But once it's done before 1.30 mm -hmm. p.m., they will be paid between 4 to 6 p.m., the same business day. Okay. And for similarly for TCI, it's actually 12 12 noon, um, and for Cayman, it's two o'clock, okay? So moving on to another question, um, is, it, is it personal bank or domestic bank that populates the list of existing banks when adding a recipient? The list of, it would be domestic bank that would give you the list of all of the existing um, banks as per the country on, on the portal. The, pers the listing of personal bank would display all of the banks that the user would have created. So if in the previous um, session, we would have did wires, for example, and in that wire section, we would have to go ahead and create banks. So under the personal banking listing is where all of the banks that you would have added or, and or created into the system would be displayed. If you want to see a listing of all the banks, it would be under the domestic bank tab. So in that, in that um, session, the, the, the person would need to actually select um, domestic bank. And I believe it's a reset or recover. Um, um, I can't remember the tab now. Maybe Rashid, you can go back to it just to show the guests. Yeah, it's, it's update list. Yeah, sorry, update list. So once you select update list, all of the banks, for example, in the Bahamas, all of the Scotia banks, all of the RBCs, First Caribbean, all of the banks would be displayed and we update that bank regularly. We update that list regularly. So as a new um, branch is, uh, is created, um, you would see that new listing in the drop down box. So it would be domestic that would have all of the all of the banks and personal would 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 be isolated to the user or the profile. Those would be the banks that they created. So that's, a, I guess, a correction that we would need to add. That was said earlier today. Thank you for that clarification, Richmond. Moving on to the next question. Will this system ever allow staff to input without being able to authorize so that it frees up the owner of the company to only have to review and authorize once they are satisfied that all the entries are correct? Yes, that is in place now. Um, again, when the what we have to be pay, pay close attention to would be when you're creating the user. As a, as a CSA, or as Rashid mentioned earlier, they call it a super user. The CSA has the, has the ability to go ahead and create additional users, as well as to maintain the access and the functionality per user. So when you're creating the user, what you can do is in their profile, there's an option for maintain, and approve. There are two columns, one for maintain and one for one for approve. You can create that user with only the functionality to maintain, meaning they can create payments and the payments would not go until it's approved. Now, as for Scotiabank's um, security, the, the control should mimic the normal signing authority as per signing a check. So if, if it requires two persons to sign a check, what should happen is that it should require two persons to approve to approve on the um, online system. As well as you can separate, you can now have users that can only approve and not maintain. So there's a dead, we can be, there's a full um, ability to differentiate the user's functionality as per the as per the controls of the company. So you can have one, you can have a, a, a complete Chinese wall per se, whereas there's one group that's creating and then there's one group that's only approving. You can, you can separate it and again, customers can reach out to us or customer support and we can walk them through should they have concerns. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Whitman. The other question is, how do we add a credit card for online payment? Who would like to take that question? Adding a credit card? Um, yes. 
The short answer is you can't. So what would have to happen is that that credit, that credit card would have to be a part of the systems um, profile. So if, we, if we're talking about ABC Company Limited, ABC Company Limited would need to have a corporate profile, uh, sorry, a corporate card, and only that corporate card can be added to the online banking for payment. You can't just go ahead and just add a random corp a credit card to make a payment. You can't do that. The system is generally set up for you to add um, accounts. That's retail accounts, whether it's going to be savings or checking. Similarly, you can't add a loan payment, I mean, a loan account. You wouldn't be able to do that either, or a mortgage or a mortgage account. It's primarily set up for retail accounts, which would be either a checking or savings account. Okay, okay. but I would just like to add, um, however, for the Jamaica um, on platform, we now have the ability to add credit cards via the bill payments option. So if you were to sign on now to bill payments, you will see Scotia MasterCard and Scotia Visa, and you'll be able to add the credit cards to the system. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the company's card, no. Say I'm a director on the for the company and I want to, I'm a user and I've been given directive to pay the director's credit card via the company's profile. I can sign in, go to bill payments, select Scotia Visa, Scotia MasterCard, and enter the card information and set them up as a bill payment pay. Then all I would have to do is just make a payment, a bill payment to the card, and that is it. But this is more mainly for cards external to the company's accounts. For cards that are for the company, you can just request for it to be added, and you can do a funds transfer to the card. Okay, thank you for that clarification, Rashid. Quickly moving to the other question. If I need to send a confirmation to a payee, what would you recommend other than a screenshot? Anyone would like to take that up? So if I well, need to send a confirm, right. Okay, go mm -hmm. ahead, Rashid. No, well, the thing is, outside of we don't have a automated prompt or uh, electronic um, receipt system in place as yet yes but and so outside of the screenshot there's no particular means to send a payment however let me just clarify something though if you're making a one-off payment to meaning a one to one person or one company once you make the payment you can always go to validation reports and download the report in pdf format and email to them However, if the report contains more than one recipient, you won't want to share another person's account information in the um, with another individual, of course. So you can't download the report as is. Um, the most I can think of right now is that you try to export the report in Excel format. You delete the other, yeah, like you just delete all the unnecessary records and save that file and probably send that to your recipient. But outside of that, there's no other way outside of screenshotting the payment and sending it to the recipient. But we are in discussions. I know that we have raised it multiple times about an electronic um, receipt system. And we're hoping to get some feedback on that pretty soon. OK. All right. So um, thank you, Rashid. The other one that I would like to um, ask is, I currently use a physical token. Do I need to change to a digital token? Well, if the physical token is currently working, um, there's no real need to switch. However, if you're encountering issues or you find that it's hard to walk around with your token, because generally most persons walk, or walk with their phone every day, you can always request for your token type to be switched to digital at that point, and then you just register and that's it. But if there's no issues with your current physical token, sure, you can just proceed to continue using it. Okay, thank you. Quickly, where can we find current fee schedules well for online transaction? So um, normally that's on our website. Um, if it's not on our, it's always on all of our websites. 
If you're not able to see it on our website for the respective countries and you want to just get, you can reach out to your business banker who can share that with you, but it should be on the website. Now, the quick question is, how can I know who is, oh, this is just for asking, how do they know who their business banker is? Um, what we will do, that's a very good question. What we will do is to ensure um, to send a list of all our business bankers for the respective countries. Um, to in each country, we'll send it to the different um, customers because you would have registered to indicate which country you're from, and we will send that with you so at least you know who your business banker. Or if in case you're if you if you are not sure and you may know someone from the branch, whether the branch manager, etc., you could ask out, reach out to them. For them to give you some clarification to indicate who your um, business banker is. The other question is um, from a customer. I suggest the vendor the vendor names be carried through to the payment daily summary for reconciliation purposes. That's a recommendation. What what do you think about that team? They're suggesting that the vendor names be carried through to the payment daily summary for rec reconciliation purposes. Can that be done? Um, I just need some more clarification. The daily summary for reconciliation, uh, such as vendor names. Um, we would need a bit more clarification on this. So what you can do, um, I think- We'll take it off here and respond yeah. to that question particular okay moving to the next question my phone is, so, is suddenly showing no tokens found what do i do who will if say that if, okay. if your phone is showing no tokens found that means you needed to you need to go through the process of adding the token um to the app i mean what our customer probably did was just simply download the app and as rashid would have showed um doing his registration, there's a plus sign. So you can add the token. And once you hit the plus sign, the camera should open up and that would have allow you to go ahead and scan the QR code that would be on the screen and that would add the token into that app. Okay. That would Thank be my recommendation. Recommendation. Okay. Thank you, Rithmond. So um, we actually have come to the end of the webinar today. Um, I just want to remind you of some key things. We would have been with you for the last three weeks, and um, it was our pleasure to have you on here with us. What we what we will be doing is sharing with you, which we have been doing for the last two weeks, is share with you the link, which is a YouTube YouTube link where you can actually look back at the the three webinars, which would have focused on um, three main areas. For so we focused on registration process digital versus um, the soft token. And we also showed you how to do to add system administrators. We went through third party transfers. We went through wire payments. And today we will focus on batch payments, which included payroll and vendor payments. Now, what we will also do is that in an email to all of your customers, we will share with you some guide, some step guides, which will show you actual screenshots um, as to how to conduct these transactions to make it easier for you. So you will have access to this video, you will have access to this webinar video, in addition to the, to the, the customer guide with screenshots and instructions as to how to conduct various transactions. We also want to, sit, to share with you now on the screen, if you would like to send us some further questions or need clarification from the various countries, you will see on there, um, the email boxes that you can send your queries or questions to, or the numbers to call if you have any questions in particular or need assistance with anything. Our goal is to ensure that you are fully equipped and able to do your transactions online, especially in this time of pandemic where we are trying to minimize um, persons going into our branches or to even help to ensure your own personal safety. We're trying to get you to be online. So we just want to remind you again, look on the screen for the, the numbers and the email addresses that you can call um, that you may contact in order to get information. We also just want to remind you um, based on today's session that we, um, when you're doing any sort of transaction with us, it's important that you have the correct account number and you have to indicate the correct um, account type. So whether it is a savings or a checking account, ensure that you have the account number the bank 
and the branch when completing any transaction at all. And please ensure that we enter the correct numbers. We have seen where customers would have um, entered a wrong digit, made a payment, waiting for it to go through, did not go through because we would have entered an incorrect number. It's important that we spend the time to ensure that you put in the correct account number, the name of the branch, the bank, and also what type of account that you'd like to make the payments to. Now for Jamaica, what I want to remind you is that one-time payment of $1 million can be done by ACH and, add, and anything above that would have to be a RGTS. And likewise for Bahamas, ACH payments over $1 million has to be done um, by RGTS. You may be asking what is RGTS? That's real gross time um, settlement. And that is where you can do transaction across different banks. So it's very important to know that. And just finally, we want to remind you that um, the process for and for signing up, you need to end to look out for at least two emails from Scotia Bank. One would be a no reply email. That no reply email is where you would receive um, your reference number. And there's an EMS email that will give you your secret number. It's very important for you to remember your secret number. You will always need that um, in, ter in terms of to log in and remember your password as well. So again, we would like to thank all the customers joining us from TCI, Cayman, Bahamas, and Jamaica for our final in the Scotia Online for Business webinar. Do look forward to being back with you another time to give you further more details on the, on the online banking. We would also welcome your feedback. So we'd, we would actually encourage you to send us your feedback on what you thought about the last three series in the emails that we would have provided on the screen so we can look or to tell us what do you, um, any recommendation, what you thought about the sessions, um, if you think we would need to do anything additional to help you in ensuring that you can do your online banking. Our goal is to make sure that all our customers are able to do their business in the most efficient way. And thank you, my team, for being here with us week after week. Rashid, Rithman, Tidra, and Michelle today. Previously, we had, um, we had William Belfort, and we also had Gail Wiley and Gail Mills. So thank you, the team, and thank you for, every, for all our customers for taking the time. Do stay safe. And what good, as you would say in Jamaica. Managing your company's finances remotely is now more important than ever. With Scotia Online for Business, you can safely and quickly conduct your transactions and save on costs. Accept payments, transfer funds, including third-party and wire transfers, view balances and download statements, pay bills and credit cards, make supplier payments, manage payroll, and purchase foreign exchange. Let us handle the way your business does business. Speak with a Scotia representative today. Call 888-429-5087 or email bnsj.businessbanking at scotiabank.com.